Welcome to the third and last REDCap video for electronic data capture in the TACTIC trial. We'll be focusing on data validation. A few things could fail REDCap's data validation features. First is a wrong value format. All data fields have been set up to receive a specific data type. Some are text fields, the least restrictive option. Others expect numbers with or without decimal points, or dates, or even files, as we've seen in the data entry video. If the value entered does not correspond to the format expected, an error message will pop up, and you will need to enter it in the expected format. The value won't be saved otherwise, and you won't be able to proceed. Here, let's put 2.5 in the number of rib spaces high, which is supposed to be an integer and we get the pop-up alert. Please try again. We are not able to click anywhere else and proceed any further until this has been corrected. Also, some fields, for example, the blood test results in the baseline instrument here, have been set up with minimum and maximum value. If you enter a value outside that range, you will get a pop-up giving you a warning. Here, the suggested range is 0 to 25. This message is just an alert, so you're not required to change your entry. However, it is good practice to double check that you have entered the value correctly. And if your value is genuinely outside the suggested range for the field, it is a good idea to create a query and enter a comment about it so it can be documented in the audit trail. On saving the form, if some of the required fields those labeled must provide value have not been completed, you will get a pop-up alert. You will see that REDCap is quite tolerant of required fields have been, been left empty, and you are given a choice of three options here. OK. This takes you back to the form for further editing. Ignore and leave record, and ignore and go to next form. Please note that on saving a form, you can have more than one pop-up alert appearing at once, which can look a bit disconcerting. Just deal with them one at a time. Here we'll click OK to stay on the form. Some data quality rules have been added to the database, and if these rules are not met, you will get a pop-up to alert you to this issue upon saving the form. For example, all inclusion criteria need to be selected yes, and all exclusion criteria need to be selected no for a patient to be eligible to the trial. In this example, we can see that the second inclusion criteria, INC2, has been ticked no, or zero, violating rule number one, and that the seventh exclusion criteria, X7, was ticked yes, violating rule number two. If you click on the corresponding links in the field involved column, this will take you back to the relevant field on the form where you can update the value if appropriate. Also, VAS scores marked on the patient diaries will be measured by two independent assessors. Both values are entered onto the database. The value entered is a score on the scale 0 to 100, and if the two measurements differ by more than two, then an alert will pop up, which should be your cue to recheck the measurements and follow the corresponding trial-specific procedure. Here we can see that the assessor number one has put 10 in breathlessness scale, 20 on the chest pain scale, but assessor 2 differs by 5. The following pop-up appears on saving the form. Indeed, we can see here that the values differ by 5, and the specific rule indicating the day and VAS scale type. Next to each data entry field are two bubbles, one with the letter H, for history, and one which looks like a speech bubble and is used for raising queries. More in the next section. If you click on the H bubble, you can see all the data history for that field, including date and time of the change, who the user was, and what changes were made. You shouldn't need to use this too often, but it can be useful in improving trial data quality. Data queries can be raised by clicking on the speech bubble icon next to a given field on the data entry form, which will open the following pop-up. Select Open Query 
and then select a user to assign a query to. This is optional. Enter some text in the comment box to describe your query and then click the open query button next to cancel. You can now see that the speech bubble or data resolution icon on that field has become more visible. Here we had already entered one. You can review a list of all outstanding queries by clicking on resolve issues to the left of the screen next to data quality and also verify that the data is correct. You can also filter this list, for example, on the status of the query. Or on who the query has been assigned to. Thank you for your attention.